Welcome to Face the Facts. It's good to have everybody here once again. I am Nick Face. Joining us today on another wonderful episode of Face the Facts, we have Phil Healy, our NORCAM coordinator from uh, NORCAM Studios. How about we say that? Say that 10 times fast. Then we have Tom Smith, who is stuck in a back room. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Walk back here again. I do want to say I am rocking the new Sports Zone sweatshirt. Yeah, hold it up. Hold it up. There you go. Nice. Do a spin. Do a spin. Yeah. (laughs) Let us. Yeah. What's on the back? Show some tush. Yeah, I know. Sorry. That's 09. We're going to lose all of our viewers. How about I? No, that's all right. We'll get another viewership. That's on there. So that's our new. those are our new sweatshirts that you'll see at some of our programs and stuff. We have them red and blue. Kind of the Tom Brady-ish kind of look, the TV. Yeah, a little bit. So kudos go out to my team for putting these nice things together. I can finally retire my 2010 sweatshirts, I guess. Sad day. Wow. <laughs> um, I want to talk about the Patriots. we got a lot to go over with that. They have a game uh, this Thursday night coming up against the 21, a 28-3 Atlanta Falcons. Um, just a little kudo shot right there at that team for that. And um, I'll go over the Celtics a little bit. Um, there's a little bit of Red Sox news, kind of disappointing news a little bit, to tell you the truth, on some free agent signings. And then the Bruins don't play. So I, I, I'm sorry. They just don't. You should be writing letters to the league about how disgusted you are at their freaking schedule. They last played Saturday night. It's another week off for this team. There is no they played, excuse. They, wasn't it Sunday, Sunday night? Day? Sorry, against Montreal. It's just Wait, awful. Why, so what's the deal with the scheduling? Is it awful? Is it just like dealing with the they play a game? They're off seven games. Seven days. They play another game. They're off five. They play another. How many? Game, they're off how many six. games are they playing this season? Eighty-two. It's the same, right? Oh, so it's, it's a full. 82. It's a full. Yeah, it's a full eighty-two, like basketball. Whoever made so the sad. schedule. They loaded up all the games in April for this team. So they're going to be playing four games a week instead of spreading it out a little bit more. doesn't make any sense wow. to me. And, and they'll be tired. They'll be tired for the playoffs. I want to start with the Patriots because they deserve to be talked about. I was incredibly impressed with that performance this past weekend. Um, I mean, where, where do we start with that? That was tremendous on what we saw from – uh, from the team against the Browns. I mean, 45-7? Seriously? Browns came in. I mean, I know they just traded Odell. Not that he's anything. Never been a fan of his. But it was the best overall game by a long shot from the Patriots this season. That was tremendous to see. It was an enjoyable game on both sides of the ball. Yeah, I mean, I, I was um... – I want to say I was surprised. It was kind of what we've been expecting and what we've kind of seen coming and in making. Um, I think what we saw, though, was that McDaniels and Belichick finally feel comfortable with Jones at the head of the offense, throwing the ball, making plays, uh, giving him more control of the game, I guess you could say, in a way. I, I was so impressed with Mac. He's 100% the rookie of the year, guys. I mean, there's no question in, in my mind. If he doesn't get the rookie of the year, there's something wrong. I mean, he's been tremendous. This game that they just had, I was so impressed with the poise. I was impressed with – you can see the confidence, and it's amazing to see from a rookie. And, I mean, the connections that he's had with those, you know, all these different receivers. I think the big thing we have to talk about here is the Hunter Henry, Mac Jones connection. I mean, he's a red zone target every week, Hunter Henry. He's been worth, I think, every ounce of money that was given to him for free agency. That was a tremendous signing. I know uh, John U. Smith hasn't been, you know, setting the world on fire or anything, but Definitely Hunter Henry, and I have to give another, uh, you know, Kendrick Bourne has been great, but the other one who's our big x liar here is Matt Judon. I mean, the guy has just been an anchor on defense, like a wrecking ball. Tremendous play from him. The running game for the Patriots has been, I think, the biggest difference in this team outside of, obviously, Cam Newton 
with effectiveness. I know they're missing James White, but the production you're getting from Stevenson, Harris, and then amazingly Brandon Bolden has transformed into James White. Has anybody asked if Brandon Bolden actually just put on a, or if James White just put on a Brandon Bolden jersey, and that's really James White? Because it's tremendous the production you're getting from a guy that you weren't counting on pretty much anything from this season. I mean, kudos to this guy. Stay healthy, please. Yeah, no, he's been, I think I said it last time, Brandon Bolden is an old man who is probably, I mean, younger than me, I'm sure. But like he's been with the team for a while. And, you know, he was a backup running back that converted to a special teams guy. And he's, you know, been with the team. I think he went on another, maybe, I think he went on another team for a little bit, but maybe not. Miami. But, uh, yeah. yeah, Miami, then he came back. That's right. Players go uh, to die. Yeah, well, or yeah, get revived or get die and we, you know, revive them. But yeah, I yeah, would even. Kyle uh, Van Noy. Kyle Van Noy. Yeah, he had a, a couple plays in there uh, this week. I think everyone's been clicking. I think Trent Brown on the offensive line returning. And Michael Olinau, uh being sit. Uh, Isaiah Wynn's line. been a big disappointment this year. I'll say that. Sure. Uh, but you know who's been a great, great uh, kind of uh, crazy uh, pick? Christian Barmore. Yes, he has. Uh, someone yep. who's really like another uh, Roll Tide uh, product who's been going crazy. And it's him, Judon, have been kind of uh, leading the way. And who, you know, who knows where it takes them? Uh, I'm also, Ken, you mentioned Kendrick Bourne. Bourne had a couple amazing catches. That one touchdown catch he had and catch and throw. That was a combination of a great Mac Jones throw and a Kendrick Bourne just kind of reach up and getting it. And, yeah, like you said, Mac Jones looked poised in the pocket. He, he was confident and he had time. I think he was kind of, for a second, he like, oh, he's weirded out. He has, so, he has this time to make a decision or make his third read. And another, yeah. oh, sorry, keep going. No, no, go ahead. That's that's a, that's all good. Uh, another point we have to make too is Jacoby Myers finally caught his first career passing touchdown. Uh, disappointing yeah. that it was from Brian Hoyer and not Mac Jones, <laughs> but hey, a, a, a first touchdown is a first touchdown, you know. When, I hope Brian Hoyer signed it to to my main man, Jam. Uh, but no, so also Brian Hoyer gets uh, Jacoby Myers his first touchdown. I think that's. I was amazed that he didn't have a touchdown yet. I really was considering that Brady was with him for what a year. Yeah. yeah. And he's had pretty good receiving yards, pretty good catches and stuff he's like that. One, but has not, the and never found the end zone. I actually think what you might see now is now that he's got the one, don't be surprised to see a little bit more clicking from stuff. So kind of like how it goes. He's he's one of the he's one of the most underrated receivers out there in the league right now. Right and now it's only he is because he doesn't have a touchdown. He's been more. He's I think he's been more productive than uh, Aguilar. One hundred percent more productive oh, yeah. and more consistent. Yeah, absolutely. And um, did you see? Oh, good. Yeah. And also, the Patriots now have played a thousand career games. Right? If it was a uh, thousand yeah career games. yeah over their history. Yeah, over the team's history. The I'm other interesting enough. bit of news that came out with the Patriots this week, and I'm, I'm actually would be surprised if you guys heard of it, heard this news that came out. I guess Bill Belichick's contracts were leaked out. I don't know if you guys heard of that. No, so, no, I didn't. Um, I guess well, I thought was, you were going to pull the contract from the side. Sports. Not that I was surprised with anything, but I yeah. guess he gets about 18 something million dollars a year to coach, which is pretty wild. Um, so does he, oh, here's the question. Out, I think by pro football news or something oh, like wow. that leaked it out. So he is throughout any sport, the highest paid coach. And then after that, I think the next highest paid was it's not Sean Payton. It was, I think it was Saban from Alabama. Yeah. I, I was going to say probably like a college yeah. coach, which is well, weird and sad. Well, well deserved really though. I mean, yeah. uh, well, it's, also it's keep it much for a coach, but like, I mean, they've, they've earned it in their careers of course I mean, and also no think question. gm i mean he's also the gm so is he de facto gm from everything too so well, is he yeah is he getting salary from that too is that kind of the thing or is it just yeah it's just a, i think it's an overall kind of thing from everything yeah. so what do we think about this atlanta game so the patriots right now are six and four are we giving this a shoe-in win what do we what are our thoughts uh, i know uh, tom's uh, laughing I, but i was 
I was thinking about that on the way into work this morning, and I, this is one of the worst seasons that the Falcons have had probably since their Super Bowl uh, attempt. Aren't they um, four and four or four and five? I think they're four and five. And I, I, I mean, we've, we've said games should be a shoe and win before, and we've been shocked. Um, so I wouldn't, I, I, I'm not going to say it's a shoe and win. The Patriots should win though. 28, three. That's my score. Uh, yeah, 28 uh, three. 34 to 28. That's 28 three. <laughs> I'll just be one of those guys and I'll go with that. I, I, this is a win. This is a win guys. There's, I hope be a lot of disappointment in, in a lot of people's eyes. If this isn't a, a win, I expect this team to be seven and four. after it's, tonight. it's a trap game. I will say it's a trap game, but also the Falcons are, are probably going to be without Patterson. One of their more yep. explosive. They're, runners they're, they're not prepared for a quick turnaround and they got absolutely shelled last week against Dallas. Yeah, which then might spark them to do something. So be careful. But you know what, Nick? I didn't even think about when you said twenty-eight to three. I didn't even think about if because is this the last? Is this the last? Is this the first time we've played the Falcons them? since then? Really? That's so. I don't know. If so. I you know what? If that if that's true, then I don't know. Is it? Does this? Are any of those players that left, or any of those, that coaching staff left? Matt, you know, Ryan. Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan. Yeah. So who is that? There's like no a, Julio Jones. There's no uh no Sanu. No Sanu. There's no who was their running back? Oh yeah. Freeman. Not, Devante Devante Freeman. I don't think he's there. Um, and the other guy. So no. A couple. This is a, it's a whole new kind of thing. But well who, who again, defensively I, who I knows? Feel, I feel confident with where this team is headed. Let's be on let's be hundred percent real here. This is a whole completely different team than they were a month ago. Whole completely different team. They got the confidence. They got the swag. They got the health to them now. They got the experience, and most importantly, they got the confidence to get this job done. So, I expect the win, and uh, they will be uh, turning the page to the next time that they play, and that will be after the Falcons. Tennessee, I believe. I, believe. I think it is Tennessee. No, nope, it is Tennessee. And they so that, that will be the big game of the season so far. Yeah, I, I think it will be. The Titans. That'll be a one o'clock game. They are not flexing it. It'll be on the 28th. Oh, oh, they're not flexing it. Yeah. All right. Maybe they will that week. Who knows? Yep. But uh, I could easily see that be like a Sunday night game. Yep. So they they, they said they're not going to do it. Could change, but we'll see. Well, okay. Let's go to the Celtics. I say that with All a right. smile on my face. Because, yep. um, Here we go. I tried last night, Phil. I tried. I know. I re- Tom's going to go to sleep. I don't blame mm-hmm. him. Um, I tried. And I, I'm just left with asking myself, why did I try? Well, I mean, what is, I guess what is your, just because they, uh, I think effort was there, but I just, maybe talent wasn't. And I think they're, you know, feeding the ball to uh, Tatum a lot. And he did what he could, but also a positive Tatum had a better game than what he's traditionally done early beginnings of this year. I'll give him that from the beginning of the year. Yes. I'll give him that. But team wise, I know Atlanta is a better team. 100% 100% right now. Atlanta is a better team with Trey Young and all that right there. Uh, that's debatable, but I... You think it's still debatable? Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm going with the right now. But no, go ahead. Do your thing. thing. Sorry. Go. I'm going with the right now. Yeah. I like Atlanta more than Boston. But this team's got to figure out how to climb over that hurdle or jump over that hurdle as soon as, you know, right now. Otherwise, I don't even call this team playoff caliber. No, they could no. easily... They could easily fall. I mean, they're seven and eight, and I think uh, Atlanta is roughly. I think they're the same or a game or two better or worse. But uh, Atlanta's kind of hit a sna- has been snagging or stumbling, I should say, uh, this early in the season. Or al- we're almost at a quarter of the season, almost to twenty something yeah. games. But um, listen, uh, they didn't hit shots and they didn't drive when they needed to drive at the end, and that they, they kind of fell into some older habits in a lot of ways. But I will, I will say this they 
It's not that they didn't play hard yesterday. And they they kind of didn't have any business being in that game towards the end in a lot of ways, but they hung around. They do get a little, a little point of credit for that, but they don't have, you need a you need your Brown back in there. And Rob Williams wasn't in there. He was uh, nursing. Uh, I think there was a, he doesn't have a crazy injury. He just has something that kept him out, like something with his ankle, I think. But uh, you didn't really have a strong offensive presence in the middle. Uh, Horford didn't play horribly, but you know, you had Horford and Cantor. And they're not two offensive juggernauts down below. Forgot and Cantor, actually. Forgot no, and you know, and Shooter or Shooter, he, or Shooter, he I think. came back to earth last night. Yeah, a little bit. And actually, and there are times when he drove to the basket. I'm like, wow, yeah, keep cutting to it, which they didn't. They needed, they needed quick when they needed quick points or like when they had possessions where they totally like fumbled it. It was, it could have easily been remedied by someone driving to the basket. Yeah. And maybe that's easier said than done. But, uh, you know, that's that's the thing. And this is one game I will say uh, Cleveland is weird because Cleveland is a better team that you might think. It's not your, it's not the Cleveland, it's not the LeBron, the or LeBron less Cleveland team you thought they were. They're a bit better. Uh, they're a bit younger and quicker. And that's, that's kind of how it goes. You need, um, I don't know. The seas still need to crash some boards. They were out rebound yesterday, I believe. Uh, and they, they missed out on some key ones. And also, you know, Atlanta hit some shots. Give credit to Atlanta. They hit some shots. They played some decent D. They switched uh, when uh, they did the appropriate things when uh, they were switched on defensively and they switched back and passed the ball around pretty well. They did what they had to do. And we need to get to that point. And we contained Trey Young, but everyone else around them kind of went to town. So I don't know. It's uh, yeah, it was disappointing. I thought it'd be a little closer, but and it was relatively, but not you know they could have they could have gotten back in that game a little better, and they didn't. They weren't hitting shots, and they they kind of stuck with the shots they weren't hitting. The next game the Celtics will play will be against the Lakers on Friday night. On at Friday home. night at home, yeah. Is LeBron back for that? I don't think so. Uh, I don't know, but I mean, anytime you're going against you know Anthony Davis, you got to worry a bit, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And I think Rob Williams might be back. I'm not sure, but I don't. I don't know when uh, Jalen Brown will be back. He probably won't be back for another week. We'll see. Yeah. I th- think that'll be touch and go. But when he gets back, I think that'll be the people who are who are saying that they were better without him, which I thought was insane to begin with. Uh, you know, they'll they'll see. They're seeing now that the offensive firepower they need. They they need him. They need him. Can't not have him. Uh, for especially if you want to go anywhere in the playoffs or anywhere else. Uh, you need Jalen Brown. But that's it. That's I would say the it. same thing. You know, they haven't had uh, Jalen Brown or anything for um, for a while now. Oh. <laughs> now Nick is chastising his staff. Oh, my God, he's taking out a bottle. He's smashing it. Uh, no, I... Uh, I, I think, yeah, we haven't had Jalen Brown for, I think, a week and a half. I, I don't know the amount of games, maybe four games, maybe four or five games. And listen, I people jump on a bandwagon, like with the Patriots or Bruins or whomever. If a team is doing well without a certain player, you're like, oh, wonder how that's working. But And you can question it, sure, but I don't think the validity behind it, no. I mean, when you get to it, when people have an off night and you need someone like Schroeder to step up, and he has in some of these games, that's great. But you need at least two to three uh, scoring options. They didn't really have it last night. They had Tatum, and to a lesser degree, they had uh, Grant Williams was, I think, the other top scorer, I think. But uh, which, I don't know. It might have been uh, – I know Richardson was pretty good. He wasn't hitting threes or other shots, but they just need to drive. Drive the basket, then kick out until things open up. Which Phil said. <laughs> uh, I know. It's been nutty today. Um I just hope that they are able to get back to the point where they can be a good quality team. Cause right now I just feel like they're in shambles still. And I'm thinking along the same lines that are we missing Brad Stevens right now? I'm, uh, stir the pot. I'm stirring the I, pot. I mean, I guess. Face. Would we be it's better? Brad, wait, look wait, at Tom's wait, disgraceful wait, face right wait. there. It's just a question. He's disgusted. He's disgusted. Just a question. Keep simmer down. Well, no, you can. I will bring it the first stirring. Cleveland game. Stirring it. 
I'll, 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 per example, this has been thrown around in the, uh, you know, sports talk circles. The end of the first Cleveland game, we were down by two. We lost the game 91-89. And just it doesn't look like there was necessarily a play drawn up. And maybe there was, and maybe Schroeder just, he drove it to the right side, and he just kind of waited for a shot to open up, and he shot it and he missed. Uh, and there, that wasn't much of a play. Uh, I will say in the Brad Stevens era, yeah, you'd have a pretty, anytime out of a timeout or out of a, you know, anything like that, you'd have a pretty, uh, you at least have something decent drawn up. And if it didn't, if it, no one had a shot, they didn't have a shot. But this just seemed like it was something, you know, and maybe this isn't uh, Doku's um, fault. I mean, it, it could have just been. disappointed with a Doku. Uh, no I don't, you know what? I don't know. I, I am. Yeah. I, I don't know. You yeah, don't have, you haven't had Brown for a week. <laughs> came from the Popovich two. school. I expected buy-in kind of system. You know, this well, is their defense is a lot want. better. Their this defense is, is a lot want. better. Tatum and Brown wanted this guy. And I don't think that he has enough right now to really have full control. I think he's still, I think the asylum is still run by, Brown and Tatum and a little bit of smart throwing his nonsense and stuff into it. And I think until a coach or whatever it is, tells these guys, this is how it's going to be. This is what we're going to do. If you don't like it, there's the four, something like that. Well, do you think that you think a more successful NBA coach has to be more of a kind of dictator like that? Or do you think they but have these to know? Guys I do. I've seen enough evidence but, now to say. Well, hold on. Do you think they need to have it? But do you also think a coach is better when it diagnoses what something is and knows what's best and I do. how to get the most talent out of it? Which I, do. I mean, it could be that that I don't calls think for a dictator, that, but not I all the time. I don't think a doku. A do, what, what's his name? Adoka, I don't know. I apologize. Adoka. It could yeah. be a doka. I'm um, I'm bad. A doka is able to fully have a grasp on what direction he wants to head yet. I think we need to see a little bit more, unfortunately, of this kind of selfish, not team caliber basketball play out to see where he needs to interject himself into. I don't think they have a direction right now on which avenue they're going to go. I think it's just rolling with it and going with it. Yeah, uh, so uh, Ume Udoka. Ume I believe it. I, I am I am a U D O K A. An interesting name for an interesting fella yeah. who constantly looks like he's sweating. But with, but the NBA is like that, apparently. I like every five seconds, everyone's mopping up the floor, which is kind of nuts. But everyone's filthy, is what I'm saying. Everyone just always sweats. Not me, not this guy. Uh no, I yeah, listen, man. I do I think he's done his thing. Do you think he's got the locker room? I don't know. I don't even think he knows. I think he's trying to do what he can right now to, to hold it back. But, hey, they played they played better defense, and Tatum has played. So last night, Tatum was in that game, and I don't mean just scoring. I mean, he was running down the floor. He was making hustle plays. So, I, I think that stuff is there. They just need to find their offense. Yeah. I think, yeah, that'll help. Anything else you want to interject with, with the basketball land? So I'd like to go uh, to the Red Sox next because, again, the Bruins don't play. I'm sorry, folks. They just don't. They don't play since Sunday, so they, they'll go last. That's what the league wants us to do, so we'll, we'll – Well, but why? Why, why, again, why is that schedule like that? Some some moron made it. I, I have an idea about it, but we'll talk about it when we get to it. Okay, right, let's go on. to the Red Sox first. Is everybody happy that Eduardo Rodriguez is out of here? Because I'm thrilled. <laughs> no. I'm saddened by it, frankly. Why? But- because I'm a fan. I remember Erod coming in and he oh, being come on. a blaze of glory. Hey, I don't blaze have to of glory. through another game where he throws 110 pitches in four innings. I don't have to sit <laughs> through that anymore. Thank the Lord. But think about the pitches you're getting. It's all about quantity, not quality. Now it's all about a replacement. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. put Whitlock or Hulk into that spot. 1,000%. 1,000%. You are Red Sox would have been out of their Evan Love in mind if they wanted to give Rodriguez five years, 77 million. The Detroit Tigers should be ashamed of themselves. Now they, they now they went now he went to the down the freaking drain for that. Now guy. he went for his now he went to where the baseball players careers die. And we, get a, and we get a pick out of it, Here right? We, go. we got like a, a second rounder. 
We got like I'm, a second. I'm round. happy yeah. with it. It cost 18 something for the qualifying offer, but you know what? He's no longer the headache of the Red Sox. This guy was Charmin soft. Charmin soft. Toilet paper. Oh, it reminds me. Yeah, but now, now, paper. now Sale needs to actually like do better this He's season. another one. He needs to go eat a freaking Big Mac. Wait, well, that just makes me crap. What is the what is the effect of a Big Mac on in, someone? He sticks in. He's, he's all bones. He's got no meat. Oh, to I him. see. I see. I see. Now, maybe that's not the meat he should be having. But I, I hear what you're saying. All go right, I get it. Now. Triple Thanksgiving meal for all I care. Go put some pounds on. Well, isn't that? But that's all how he's always been. Hasn't he? <laughs> go back for extra helpings on some pie or whatever. Get some job. Oh. Fill yourself up, guy. Nick, I haven't eaten. Please stop. I just had my soup. I need you that. had your soup? You have to rub it in. Um, true stews. No, three true stews. We're not sponsored, but <laughs> no, we're, we're no, no, we can't do that. That's right. No, FDA. I, you know, listen, I say the FDA will come after us. It's not the no. FDA. If the FCC. Well, no, they listen. FDA has been on our tail for a while. <laughs> uh, no, I listen. Erod, listen. As a fan, I'm glad we got those last two playoff games from. They were decent. We got some decent starts out of them in the playoffs. Like he had a decent start against Houston, and he had a great start against uh, Tampa Bay. And I think that was the closing. Uh, I think that was the eliminating game, wasn't it? Against Tampa Bay, he pitched. Yes, it was. Yeah. So I mean, I, I'm with I'm with you 100. I think Tigers overpaid, and we get a draft pick out of it. So as a fan, like as a you know as a kind of heart uh, bleeding heart fan that I am, sad to see him go. Glad we got something out of him. But you know, you're right. He, he was. You know, we weren't gonna we weren't gonna pay that much, and we shouldn't have. So, and if I'm if I'm Tanner Hoke or Garrett Whitlock, I'm sitting there like, all right, well now this is my chance. Like I get to show. I think they deserve the chance in the rotation. Player. But the one thing they got to do is they got to make sure this bullpen is stabilized if they're moving one of those guys into one of the starting roles. So that's going to be on the big list of to dos for um, Hein Bloom this off season. But the bullpen's you know, the always. The bullpens always needed help. They need a closer. If they come back and tell me that Matt Barnes is the closer from this year, I'm boycotting the season. I'm done. I'm just I'm done. If I have to go watch Matty Backpacks throw the freaking baseball into the dirt where it's going into the freaking stands, he can't control a freaking pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's, he's terrible. Still got up at the right. Exactly. Yeah, Matt Barnes. Yeah. No, I heard you. And I, listen, I'm going to take my Matt Barnes jersey. Uh, and... He sent a picture yesterday on his Instagram that he's busy in the gym. <laughs> oh, he yeah, he works as a janitor. Busy in the gym. The yep. yeah. Watch out. Watch out, 2022. Here it comes. Well, Watch what? yeah. Out. What do you, do you think they're going to pay for any? Or do you think they're going to get anyone from their system or shift someone they over? Or do you think they're going to pay? Because that but was the Achilles think... heel of this season was not having some bullpen stability. Yeah. I mean, it the really postseason, was. who was your guy? They got hosed. They got real lucky that first half of the season that Barnes could actually control a pitch. They did. They did. They did. Well, so I hope that they go out and they find they need a closer. They really haven't had – I mean, Kimbrell was here, and he did a pretty good job except during the postseason. He was but a heart attack, man. People forget. I want Papelbon. <laughs> I still like Papelbon. Is Alan he Embry. alive? OG. Yeah. yeah. OG. Apple Bond's an analyst on Nesson now. He does something. Oh, amazing. that's, that's yeah. right. I've seen him. That's right. Bring, yep. bring back Alan Embry. Al, yes. Uh, I was I was a Mike Timlin guy. I like Timlin. Uh, they both were. Who was Timlin and it? They were the setup and they go back and forth. Timlin right? was seventh, eighth. Then it went uh, Okajima. Oh, Okajima. Remember Okajima? Yes. Jackie Okajima. And then we had. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the other guy? Junichi Tazawa. Tazawa, Junichi. I remember Tazawa. Junichi. He yeah, did a nice uh, job. Daisuke, had, obviously. Uh, you know, Okajima over there. Um, Okajima, okay, what? <laughs> we have the peanut gallery over in the corner today. They're just naming uh, off Japanese islands for Kamikaze, no reason. So, um, it's just like, uh, Suzuki. It's like, no, <laughs> you idiot. We know. <laughs> You read something off of a Japanese yeah, fighter plane, of a box. <laughs> <laughs> which is insane. I don't know why you became enemies with the uh, Japanese, but that's how it happens. I didn't. 
I didn't. It's just, you know, when you throw out those names and stuff. It, it just happened. It's just like I yeah, feel like, like this is a Don Orsillo, Jerry Remy broadcast here with um, sure. all, all the hijinks and stuff that happened between the episodes. Highly irreverent, but, my friend. Absolutely. That's you got you gotta have the entertainment value in some sorts and capacities from stuff. And you know, we're only playing along. So anybody that gets offended from this stuff, just just click a click away. It's all good. Click away. Uh so um let's hope for so bullpen wise, that was my big thing that I was hoping that they would get um something to st- stabilize there. But the big move that I was disappointed with with what happened from this week with free agency. Justin Verlander is going back to the Astros. I was disappointed with that because they were putting some feelers out, trying to see if they could get him or whatnot. And he's not, he's not, he's going to stick with the Astros and Noah Syndergaard was another one that was getting thrown around there. Anybody, what team was he going to? Wasn't the Yankees. He's going, he went somewhere. Hold on. But it was like a risk, you know, take a risk, take a chance. I, I would see what it takes to bring Scherzer here. If the Dodgers aren't going to retain him or something, figure out, bring Scherzer in for a couple of years, even at 39, I'll take him. I'll take him. Senegard went to. Oh, the angels. The angels. Yep. Yeah. That's speaking of crazy. where team, speaking of where uh, players go to die. <laughs> the angels. Oh, uh-huh. angels. So we'll see. that's where oh, I was the baseball front. Um, the other thing I was going to mention was, uh, as we shift to the Bruins, that was a great game they had against the Canadians. It was great to see that rivalry renewed for one of the first times since 2019, very much missed. The Bruins had a heck of a game, played solid. I think they're trying to find their groove there a little bit, trying to get themselves together. I still think they miss Krejci big time. I still think this defense has been shaky at times it definitely has got to be better so and then the goaltending i'm a swayman guy i i don't want to see linus omar anymore in my net i don't i just don't so that's the outlook for them yeah, the, bruins, the bruins return back to play saturday night against the flyers i think they go back to back give me a second yes they do they play. They they play. Uh, they play the Flamers, the uh, Calgary Flames, um, on Sunday night. So that's uh, that's the outlook for the Bruins right there. And then the Celtics. Yeah, so you know, it's Lakers. Then it is after that uh, they play the Thunder Saturday night. And then the next game will be against the Rockets on Monday night. That's the outlook for uh, what's ahead. Yeah, my just real quick. I, um... My, my thought on the schedule is usually the, you know, the Bruins catch fire late in the season or later on in the season, usually beginning of the season and later on in the season. Um, so, I mean, maybe the schedule will, will, will work in their favor, but at the same time, you're playing more games at the end of the season, close to the playoffs. So then that puts health concerns into the question and everything too. Um, but who knows? I mean, they're starting to look a little better now. Um, but we'll see, I guess. Is it just they weren't the venues weren't available, or just do we know? That could like, be is there part any... of it, or some someone had to have screwed up and been like, "Oh, yeah, why is this like this?" And now we have to move all the games to. Is that for most of the teams in the NHL though? Or are they like kind of scattered at the moment? No, I, I, I it's. I'm not sure what other team schedules look like, but I don't think it's as bad as the Bruins. I think the Bruins have the worst schedule as of right now. So weird. So weird. weird. All over the place with it. Well, I know we have to go fly. I know Tom's got fun things to do. I have a whole list of things I got to do. I'm sure you do too as well. But it was good to talk and get our stuff situated with all things happening in sports. Go Patriots. Uh, Let's hope they get the victory here this evening. Let's hope the Celtics figure out figure their shit out basically and then uh let's hope that the bruins keep on uh playing playing well so that's uh that's how things look we will see you next time happy thanksgiving to all of you out there we will see you again next time for another episode of face the facts see you then 